So in this lesson, we're going to go over how to divide a whole number by a mixed number. We'll go over two examples. The first I'll go over with you, and the second I would like you to pause the video and try on your own. Then you can unpause it and check if you're correct. Coming up on the math review. So in question one, we have a whole number five divided by a mixed number, one and one fifth. The very first thing we need to do is make sure that we turn everything into a fraction. Now, how exactly do we do that? Well, for whole numbers, we have to make this a fraction by putting it over one. So here, where we have the number five, I'm going to rewrite this as five over one. And whenever we have mixed numbers, what we need to make sure we do is we need to convert those mixed numbers into improper fractions. Now, if you don't remember how to do that, we'll go over that here nice and slow. So the first thing we need to do is take our denominator and multiply it by our whole number. So we've got five times one, and that gives us five. The next thing we'll need to do is we'll need to take this result and add on the numerator, which is one. So five plus one equals six. That's going to be our new numerator. And the last thing we'll do is we'll keep the denominator exactly the same. So we'll make that six over five. And don't forget to bring down your division symbol. So from the problem we originally had, this is our new division problem because we have to make sure that everything becomes a fraction. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this and then we're going to start the actual division process. Now that we've got it written here, five over one divided by six over five, we should make sure we make a KCF chart. KCF is the process you use whenever you're dividing fractions. And each of these letters means something really important. The letter K stands for keep. And what we're keeping is the first value that we have. It's going to stay exactly the same. So we started with 5 over 1. And since that's in K, we're going to keep 5 over 1. The C stands for change. And what we're changing is the division operation into multiplication. So here, underneath the division sign, I'm going to write the multiplication sign because that's what we're changing it to. And last, we've got the letter F, which stands for flip. And all we're flipping is a fraction into the reciprocal. And don't get freaked out by the word reciprocal. All it is is a fancy math word, meaning to take your fraction and flip it around. So the top becomes the bottom and the bottom becomes the top. So here, our six over five will become five over six. So now we've got it rewritten as a multiplication problem. So all we have to do is multiply across. So first we'll do five times five, and that gives us 25. Next we'll multiply one times six, and that will give us six. So our answer is 25 over six. But the problem with that is that it's improper. The top of our fraction is bigger than the bottom of our fraction. So we need to change that. In order to do that, we're going to have to see how many times six can go into 25. Let's do that math over here. So we'll get 25 divided by six. How many times can six go into 25 without going over? Well, that would be four because six times four will give us 24. And that's just enough to go into 25 without going over. So let's subtract that and we get one. So this will give us everything we need to write our final answer. So six can go into 25 four complete times. So that's going to be our whole number. Next, what we have left over is our remainder. That's going to be our numerator. So I'll put a line here and a one. And our denominator is going to stay exactly the same. 
So that's going to be 6. So our final answer is 4 and 1 sixth. So here's your second example. 10 divided by 4 and 2 thirds. I recommend you pause the video and try this one on your own. Then once you're done, hit play and check if you're right. So remember, whenever you're dividing by a fraction, you've got to make everything a fraction. So here we have a whole number 10 and our mixed number 4 and 2 thirds. In order to make this whole number a fraction, you got to make sure that you put it over 1. So I'm going to rewrite this whole number not as 10, but as 10 over 1. Then I'll bring down my division symbol. And finally, I'm going to make this mixed number a fraction. In order to do that, we need to make it an improper fraction. And in order to make it improper, we have to complete three steps. Step one, we've got to multiply our denominator and our whole number. So that's three times four. That gives us 12. Step two, we need to make sure we add the result and the numerator. So that's going to be 12 plus two, which is 14. And finally, step three, we're going to keep our denominator exactly the same. So our new division problem that we're going to start with is 10 over 1 divided by 14 over 3. So do you remember the first thing we have to do with our new division problem? Well, we should make sure that we start with a KCF chart, where the K stands for keep. So we're going to keep 10 over 1 exactly the same. Remember that the C stands for change. We're going to change this division into the operation multiplication. So let's put that here. And finally, we've got 14 over three. That's in our F column and F stands for flip. So this 14 over three will now become three over 14 because the bottom became the top and the top became the bottom. Now that we have it as a multiplication problem, now we can just multiply across. But for a problem like this, I highly recommend cross cancellation. If you don't know what cross cancellation is, make sure you pay extra close attention. But I'll also make sure I include a video to cross cancellation in the description down below. Here's how it works. With cross cancellation, we're going to look at the top of this fraction and the bottom of this fraction. So I'll look at 10 and 14. And then I'm going to ask myself, hey, self, is there any number that can divide both 10 and 14? And if there's more than one, you got to think about the biggest one that can divide both of them. And thinking about 10 and 14, I think the biggest number that can divide those is 2. So I'm going to divide 10 by 2 and write the result here. So 10 divided by 2 is 5. So I'll cross off 10 and I'll put a 5 next to it. And then I'll look at 14 and I'll divide it by the same number, which is 2. Well, what's 14 divided by 2? Well, that's 7. So I'll cross off 14 and put a 7 there instead. Then what I like to do is I like to rewrite my new fractions so I'm not confused with what I had before. So my new fraction here is 5 over 1. I'll write down my multiplication symbol, and then I'll write down my new fraction here, which is 3 over 7. And now that I have these numbers, I can multiply straight across. 5 times 3 is 15. 1 times 7 is 7. But just like in the last example, we ended up with an improper fraction, which means that we're going to have to convert this improper fraction into a mixed number. In order to do that, what I'll need to do is I'll have to find out how many times 7 can go into 15. I'll do that work over here. So how many times can 7 go into 15 without going over? Well, that's 2. So I'll write that on top here. Because 2 times 7 is 14. Then I'll subtract that and I'll get 1. 
now that I have this, I have everything I need to write my final answer. Because 7 goes into 15 two whole times. So that's going to be the whole number in my mixed number. My remainder is going to become my numerator, or the top, over my denominator, which is just the divisor here, which is 7. So my final answer to this problem is 2 and 1 over 7.